Hampden Park is set for explosive action in Thursday morning's World Cup qualifying match between Australia and Scotland. A disappointment is all I, I, I would imagine it would be um, a draw or a, a defeat, obviously, it would be a disaster. And I still have on my conscience that I sent Alex a dossier on the Australian team and I still have his thank you letter. It's a World Cup death for the team that uh, gets eliminated tonight. The A-League has, has brought, I think, everyone together to, to support football. I think what was needed was one team, one city, to bring everyone together. Gosford Waterfront today looked like the venue for an outdoor rock concert. I think what we achieved as a team was just really satisfying. But the stars were a football team that's won the hearts of thousands of people from the Central Coast and beyond. And just seeing what it did to the town, I think it gave Central Coast an identity. I don't think I'd be playing football, actually, without the Scottish influence. My family actually are from Ayr, and there is Ayr United, but being that they're not particularly great, <laughs> they all decided to go to the Celtic and Rangers. No cones. My generation, I feel like I was very lucky to play in that generation because we were on the cusp of amateur to professional. The good fortune that I had when I was with the Matildas is that my two spells with them were at very significant times. We had a team that was competitive to a team that felt that in any day that we went up against any team in the world that we could beat them. It is a Rooney, a shot coming in. Oh, let's go! The Scottish influence was quite amazing. It's very, very sad that Jimmy Mackay passed away early in the life because nobody can ever forget the goal that he scored to put us in the World Cup Finals. What about this one? In the 1880s, there's a huge wave of migration to Australia, bringing a critical mass of Scots. They were the first group who set up clubs called Celtics, and Caledonians. The community's got a real love for the club. Established in 1891, predominantly by Scottish coal miners. Being 130 years old this year, there's not too many clubs that can boast that. It's pretty special when you come through those gates and sort of come into the cauldron of Wembley. Scotsman, Englishman, Australian, Yugoslav, you know, different nationalities, but we could mix with any of them. I always put myself in the position of a spectator. What do you want to see? And uh, it's all about goals. Is it more manly to drink without a straw? <laughs> Maybe we should ask the audience. I'm not an angel by any means, but those basic things, treat people with respect, do the right thing. And if you can put a smile on somebody's face and have a bit of a laugh while you're doing it, I've always been up for a bit of a, a joke. Tommy was the best coach that I've ever had and that was the funnest time in my playing career. I think the legacy that Tommy left was actually ensuring that all the players that played underneath him continued their love for the game. Ish has got the jersey on, she's got the jacket on, she's sleeping in it tonight and there's plenty of Aussies who have arrived in Valenciennes today. What I feel is, as I get older and probably more nostalgic, I feel a great connection now and I feel a great debt to the players that have come before and the people that have come before. They're capturing the imagination of the public because all these girls are full-time professionals now. They're training day in, day out with world-class players and you can see it. <laughs> and also they're great role models and they're good fun. Obviously my dad is a proud Scot and uh, I grew up in Australia. And my dad nearly had a fight in the stand, you know, because there was a Scotch guy next to him. Yeah, Mitchell. Jim Layton had one of his outstanding games. Still David Mitchell. Mitchell. Cosmina! Brilliant save by Layton. We did everything but score. Patikas! But Bill Murray and I, the co author of the standard history of soccer in Australia. As the referee blows the final whistle. I think we both realised at that point that we were not Scots anymore. And I certainly changed my allegiance from that day onwards. <laughs>